Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at parametric differentiation so we can answer questions from exercise 9G. So this is the differentiation of two parametric equations. Remember a parametric equation is one where we have an x equation in terms of the letter t or theta and y in terms of t or theta. Now we're going to be following this rule here dy by dx, which is what we're looking to find when we differentiate, is equal to dy by dt divided by dx by dt. And if you consider these as fractions, then in fact, if you simplify these fractions here, you're going to simplify them to dy by dx. Um, you can see this from the division above, that the t terms on the right-hand side will cancel out, leaving dy by dx you would then get the gradient function in terms of your parameter t instead of x or y. So let's see this in action then. So we've got an x equation here and a y equation here. And these here are parametric equations because they're two different equations. And the way that the coordinates are calculated using these equations is we select certain values for t and then substitute them into both the formulas, and that gives us an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Let's have a look at finding the gradient <coughs> when t equals 2. So in this case here, we're going to start with x equals t cubed plus t, and differentiate x. And remember, we're differentiating with respect to t, so t is the letter we're differentiating around, and in that case, we're going to need a dt on the bottom. So dx by dt equals 3t squared plus 1. Do exactly the same thing for the y equation, dy by dt equals 2t. And then we're just going to apply the formula of dy by dx equals dy by dt divided by dx by dt. So dy by dt will go on the top of the fraction, that's 2t. And dx by dt will go on the bottom of the fraction, so that's 3t squared plus 1. So this is the answer to the derivative of uh, these two parametric equations here. Um, but we'd like to find the gradient when t equals 2. So what we'll do is we'll substitute that in then. You can see how all of these are matching up here. Uh, so substituting the value t equals 2 and simply, and we get an answer of uh, 4 over 13. Yeah, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 squared is 4, times the 3 gives you 12, plus the 1, that gives you 13. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to that question there then. So uh, the next question is, in terms of theta now, so, and exactly the same thing, rule, the exact same rule works with d theta as well dy by dx is going to equal dy by d theta all over dx by d theta. So find the equation of the normal, okay, we're going to have to add in an extra step there, uh, at the point p when theta equals pi over 6 to the curve with parametric equations, x equals 3 sine theta and y equals 5 cos theta. So what we're going to do, need to do first is find the gradient so then we can find then the normal gradient. So x equals 3 sine theta. Differentiate that and you get 3 cos theta. Uh, take y equals 5 cos theta, differentiate that and you get minus 5 sine theta. Then put them two together. So dy by d theta over dx by d theta. So do the y1 divided by the x1. Make sure you don't get that the wrong way around. A classic mistake that I sometimes make is that um, is that I think that I've done the x equation first, so I need to put the x on the top because that's where it goes in first. Uh, make sure you've got the y equation on the top. Uh, so in this case here, it's going to be minus 5 sine theta over 3 cos theta. Okay, so now we're going to plug in the value of pi over 6 to work out the gradient. <clears throat> And in this case here, we're going to get minus 5 over 3 root 3. We're not after the gradient, we're after the equation of the normal. So then the equation of the normal is going to be the flipped, the flipped negative. So it's going to be 3 root 3 over 5. It's a negative here, so it will turn into positive over here. So we've now got the gradient of the normal. Now what we're looking to do is substitute y equals mx plus c into this. So work out the x value, which is 3 over 2. Substitute in the y value, which is three, 5 root 3 over 2. 
and then effectively substitute it into y equals mx plus c. Sometimes people use this funny relationship here, but basically you're just substituting into y equals mx plus c, simplifying your answers, creating common fractions, common denominators and the fractions. And it looks like this here is our final answer. 10y equals 6x root 3 plus 16 root 3. Okay, so there we are. We'd have got exactly the same thing if you'd have plugged it into y equals mx plus c. Plug in your x value. We know the m value. We know the y value. Uh, so in this case, we just need to work out c. Oh, we can simplify it as well. That's handy. Good. Okay, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the, two, pause the video and have a go at these two questions. Right, okay, let's have a go at this first one then. So dx by dt is going to equal um, cos t. The 2 will disappear there. And dy by dt is going to equal plus 4 sine t. Cos differentiates to minus sine, so it turns the negative into a positive. So the final answer here, dy by dx, is going to be the same as dy by dt all over dx by dt, which is going to equal 4 sine t over cos t, so basically 4 tan t. Okay, good, there we are, that's the first question done. Question 2, find the equation of the tangent to the curve with parametric equations, x equals this, y equals this, at the point where t equals pi. So the first thing we do there is work out the gradient of this tangent first. So this is going to give us minus 2 cos t. And the next one is going to be dy by dt. Uh, now we're going to have to use the product rule here. So it's going to be minus t sine t plus cos t. So let's now work out what dy by dx is going to equal. That would be minus t sine t plus cos t all over minus 2 cos t and what we'll have to do now is substitute that into our calculator substituting in the value for pi so um, substituting into your calculator minus pi bear with me uh, sine t sine pi well that would be zero so we can just cancel that one out uh, plus cos pi all over minus two cos pi and we'll end up getting minus a half. So once we've got the gradient, we can now plug things into y equals mx plus c. But oh, hold on, we don't know the x and the y coordinate yet. So we're going to have to plug in pi into the x and the y equation here. So sine of pi is 0, so the x one's just going to be 3. And the y one here, pi times cos of pi. Cos of pi is minus 1, so this answer here is going to be minus pi. So now we can substitute in these values. Minus pi equals minus a half times 3 plus c. So in this case here, c is going to equal minus pi plus 3 over 2 equals c. So therefore, our final answer then is going to be y equals minus a half x minus pi plus 3 over 2. There we are. So that's how we answer that question there. And similar, uh, if you were working out an equation of a normal, you just do minus 1 over the, res the, um, the gradient. Right then, thanks very much for watching this video. Have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 9G. Make sure you have a go at those problem solving and exam style questions as well, if you really want to extend yourself. Thanks very much for watching.